The pair have claimed they were fast-tracked because they were working journalists just doing their job. Only trouble is, if Willoughby or Schofield really were trained journalists, they are TV presenters, there is a world of difference, they would have known there was absolutely no need for them to be in the hall. They were providing no service at all to their viewers by being there as every teensy thing that was happening was being live streamed 24-7. No, the real story was the people in the queue, how long they had waited, how far they had come, why they had felt compelled to be there. But Holly and Phil were not interested in that story. Instead, they insisted they were only doing it for us and went to Westminster Hall for everyone who couldn't go. The word Tosh springs to mind. If they really were doing it all for us, where was the big TV special so we could see what they had done? Well, there was not one, just jittery explanations and lots of self-justification and groveling from two TV presenters who are used to being adored, not criticized. Holly's apparently been in tears because ITV's big bosses did not try to her rescue soon enough. Why should they? They did not even know she was going until it was too late. Their editor Martin Frizzell had not thought to inform daytime bosses of the jaunt. If he had, I suspect it would have been stopped because of how it looked. Because it looked like was two big shot presenters who thought they were too important to wait in line like the general public. Anyway, why does Holly need protecting? She is a 41-year-old woman running a multi-million pound empire. Surely both she and Schofield could have seen how what they were doing might be interpreted? And if they could not, maybe they are not the Red Dot journalists they think they are. Schofield, meanwhile, is saying nothing because his lawyers have told him not to. Make of that what you will. These two pride themselves on their connection with the people they broadcast to every day. But how connected are they if they could not see how much this would insult and upset them? If they really knew the people who made them stars, they would have queued beside them like Susanna Reid did, for eight hours. Like David Beckham did, for 13 hours. Maybe for some TV presenters the multi-million pound earnings, the fame, the adoration, really does remove them from reality and make them think they are a cut above the people they serve. I do not think either should be sacked, even though as I write the petition to axe them now stands at 66,000 and rising. But this should serve as a wake-up call. Both are where they are because of the decent, ordinary people who watch their shows, the same decent ordinary people who stood in that queue and who now feel humiliated. Liz's ballsy budget has made me think again, and primed Britain for takeoff I may have to eat my words over Liz Truss. I called her weak, ineffectual and not very bright. However, the woman who looks more like a bookkeeper than a prime minister is making Maggie Thatcher look like a bit of a sissy with a budget that amounts to the biggest tax giveaway in three decades. She has made it clear that she does not give a stuff about being popular, she just wants to do what works to grow the economy. And to that end, her and Kwasi Kwarteng's mini budget, which is actually a ruddy great big budget, has slashed tax and reversed national insurance and corporation tax hikes. Stamp duty is cut, the fracking ban is lifted. She froze the energy bill cap at £2,500 for two years and lifted planning restrictions to help kickstart the building of tens of thousands of houses. She is also axing the banker's bonuses cap, incentivizing investment. After three years when this country seemed to have been preserved in aspect, it suddenly feels like we have had a great big rocket shoved up our backsides and we are ready to relaunch. 
and while that is scary, it also feels good to finally have a PM of conviction, one with bigger cajones than the previous male incumbents. This is a huge gamble for Truss, and us. There are those already screaming it will not work, but with inflation rocketing and productivity on the floor she knows we cannot stay as we are. The next few months are going to be a terrifying white-knuckle ride. Trust's radical vision is going to make or break us, but at least we now have a PM with a definite plan, and guts. Because what she has just done takes guts. Now we have just got to hang on in there and hope to God she knows what she is doing. One commentator said this week Truss is the woman who can deliver a Brexit that actually works. Here is bloody hoping. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. Media still banging out about victim Harry during Queen's funeral It is beyond belief that in the days before the Queen's funeral the media ended up talking about Prince Harry's heartbreak at not being able to wear the ER cipher on his uniform. It was not enough that his father, the new king, had allowed him to wear his uniform at the vigil in Westminster Hall. No, he was still devastated that he could not have the Queen's initials on his shoulder. And somehow the press got wind of it, I wonder how. Only victim Harry could be devastated about what he was wearing on a day that a grieving Charles, Anne, Edward and Andrew were preparing to bury their beloved mother. Has Harry forgotten that he was the one who quit royal life despite being told time and again what that would mean? He chose his new life in California knowing he had have to give up all his military titles. He gave up all the perks of royalty in exchange for independence. And now he has seen what that actually means, he does not like it. I have no doubt he was upset at his grandmother's death, yet all I saw in him last week was anger and petulance. Maybe he will be so angry he will not come to his father's coronation, which would be a blessing. We have had enough of his negativity and whining. Respect is a two-way street trans activists are forever telling us we must respect their views and their life choices. Pity they do not afford the rest of us the same courtesy. This week a revolting woman called Carly May Cavanaugh, who works for Brighton MP Lloyd Russell Moyle, shoved her big aggressive face at a father carrying his baby and called him a fascist. She then leaned into the infant's face and added and you're raising a little fascist. What kind of vile creature tries to intimidate a baby? The father was at a demo for the Standing for Women organization, a group that supports women's sex-based rights. Kavanaugh called the demonstrators and their organization filth. Imagine the self-righteous uproar if anyone had called a group of trans people filth. She has since apologized for letting down her friends in the trans community but incredibly not to the father for calling him a fascist or for scaring his baby. It is to be hoped her MP boss has fired her by now. This woman behaved like a thug for no other reason than that someone disagreed with her. Give us a good look at those come to fed eyes. The divine Roger Federer who played his last ever game in London yesterday, is considering coming back as a commentator at Wimbledon, presumably to replace Boris Becker. If he does, TV producers should allow viewers to see him at all times. While Becker has a face for radio, the god Federer has a face and body for Hollywood. The women of Britain must not be deprived of it. Queen's heavenly message 5 spectacular, perfectly arched rainbows lighting up the skies in the days before Her Majesty's funeral? I refuse to accept it was just coincidence. It was the greatest Queen who has ever lived looking down on us and saying goodbye.